few weeks went by, and my paranoia started to simmer. For some unknown reason, even to date, I still don't know. But one day, I decided to check my spam mail. Maybe I wanted to clear it. I don't know. I was selecting messages for deletion when I saw one marked in the subject line. From a friend you have met earlier. Sent a week earlier. It read, Hey Jay, how you doing, motherfucker? It's your friend from the chat you recently were in. Remember? Shocked I got your email? Actually, I got more than that. He continued to insert my address and phone number. Just wanted to let you know that you're done. See you soon. I sat back in my chair with tears filling my eyes. And I don't cry often. I didn't know what to think. All I knew was that I really wanted to tell my parents. And I know, I should have. And you guys will judge me for it. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I was just trying to finish the school year and was going to be home for the summer vacation to try to prepare for the inevitable. Weeks spent by with me looking over my shoulder and not getting much sleep. I'd become depressed and really run down. I lost my job because I missed so many shifts. I would rarely leave the house. My mom stayed home to take care of me while my dad worked. If something happened to her under my wrongdoing, I knew I just couldn't live with myself. After I started to believe he wanted me to be scared and was just taunting me, it's when things took a turn. My family and I just got home from a birthday party for my cousin when I went upstairs to find something off. My laptop was sitting open on my bed, turned on. I walked closer and realized my webcam was recording. I took an awkward step toward my desk where I had placed a small pocket knife between my bed and desk. It was then I heard. Damn, you're taller than I thought. And I felt two gr hands grab me, one wrapping over my mouth. I froze for a moment and then began to fight. Holy crap, I never fought so hard to scream in my life. Always saying things like, Told ya. I'd get ya. Now take a look. He directed me in front of my, of my webcam. All those things you call people and things you said to them are going to be called out here and they're all going to see this. He laughed menacingly. I'm going to gut you and your family and you are going to show people not to screw with us. I finally fought hard enough to free myself and break free of the hand holding my mouth shut and scream, DAD HELP! Although, I heard some scuffling downstairs and my mom screaming. I got no answer. I broke free of his other arm and popped the guy in the face and stabbed him in the gut with a small knife and ran to help my parents. But the fucker was faster. As I approached the stairs, I felt my feet get away from me and push from the back. He just slammed me over the railing leading downstairs. I fell about 20 feet and my ankles broke my fall. God damn it. I knew they were broken, or at least one was, the second I smacked the ground. In a daze, I heard two pops from the kitchen and I tried to crawl. Screaming for my parents. I'm coming, Jay! My dad screamed. The guy threw me down in the step, threw me down the steps, started to make his way down. Fairly quickly knowing my dad was still alive. You are all dead! All of you! He screamed across the house. He ran up to me and stomped on my face, 
what it felt like what chattered my cheek bone, make me yelp out in pain. I still remember that pain before almost passing out. As he started winding up for another stomp, I started to slowly black out and all I remember was hearing three more gunshots, which will forever ring in my head, before completely losing consciousness. I woke up to my father crying for me to wake up and mother crying to the paramedics. They were okay. The paramedics moved over to me and started doing their thing. Can you hear me, young man? He asked before shining a light in my eye. I couldn't respond. I was so messed up. That blow to the head really got me. I again passed out. It wasn't until the next day I finally woke up with enough understanding of what really went was going on. Yet, it was late in the day and everyone was waiting for on me to wake up. Everyone being the doctors and my parents. A big smile went across everyone's face when they noticed I was up. Hey, Chip! My dad cheerfully said. My mom just started crying. What happened? I slowly asked. <laughs> Three men broke in last night. You managed to break your leg falling down the stairs and fracturing your other ankle. You got a good stomp on you. But you'll be fine, he explained. And the men? I asked in pure terror for the answer. Shot me once, just missing my shoulder. But I got two of them. He nodded while turning to my mother. The neighbors heard the gunshots and called the police. Your mother ran outside screaming for help. Then I, after shooting the first guy twice in the head, noticed the third guy make a break for the door and I chased him towards the front of the house where you were laying there getting stomped on and fired at both the men, shot the one stomping on you in the throat and ran after the third guy. And? I simply asked. He looked down and said, he jumped in the passenger seat of a blue pickup and they took off. Did they get caught? My eyes getting wider. No, but they're looking. He had his duct tape duct plates duct tape over. He explained. There was a silence that filled the room for a moment. Then my dad spoke again. Hey, your buddy Sam came by, gave his condolences. It was then I realized something. My laptop. It had recorded the whole ordeal, and I'm sure the police searched the whole house. I thought, should I ask if they found it propped up recording? Quickly thought I should just wait and see if somebody brings it up. But no one ever did. In fact, I got home to find it smashed in pieces on my ground. The guy probably ran in the room when things went wrong and smashed it while I was too busy crawling to my parents. Obviously the cops didn't think he was using it and probably think it had broken in between the scuffle between the guy and I. I spent a week or two in the hospital before I was free to go. Eventually they caught the guy driving the truck due to the fact that his truck was so distinguishable and we all had to testify against him. And trial we refused to give up the name of the third accomplice. While in court, he just stared at me most of the time, and I tried to hide my fear the best I could. I was mostly worried he would mention how I brought this upon myself and would make me an accessory. I don't know how it works, but he never did. He was found guilty to an accessory and attempt of murder and armed robbery. 20 years without the possibility of parole, the two dead men were no bodies, but when police raided their houses, they found an enormous amount of weapons, probably purchased from the deep web. I, the whole part that scares me the most, is how he only lived about an hour away, along with the guys that broke in. Knowing that there's sick creeps all like this all over the place haunts me. 
You never know who someone is. Time went by and as life went on, more people began to give less of a crap. I developed PTSD and to this day wake up screaming, thinking someone is watching me. I had to buy a nightlight like a friggin' five year old. It's been three years and I've almost gotten over my fears. We moved not long after for obvious reasons and began to go about our lives. The reason I'm posting this is now is because I received an email a few back, weeks back with the pictures of the two dead men in my ha old house. The subject marked revenge. Who p took the pictures? I don't know. Maybe the guys came back later and took the pictures. I don't know. Maybe one of the detectives or coroners who took the pictures of the case is in on it. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I messed up with the big murderous cult. Or maybe it's just some psychos with computers. Again, to this day, no one else knows why they broke in. Simply took it as some thugs trying to mess with the more fortunate. Sam has an idea of who broke in because of the phone call I made to him about the chat room, but I refuse to tell. Yet, now that I know that they are still out there and haven't forgot about me, it brings chills to my spine. Now I have to live watching my back for God knows how long before they attack again. Maybe one day I'll grow enough of a sack to ask for help, but I know nobody who can do anything to stop it. I'm not here to say, don't go on the deep web or anything like that. Just be mindful of the repercussions that may follow. Good luck. And if you're reading this and know who I am or you're the one that sent the email, I'm sorry. Please leave me alone. I learned my lesson. Alright, that's the end of the story. Thank you guys for uh, sticking with me for the story. If you have not watched the other videos, go on my channel, go watch them. I might leave a link in the description to go watch them. But uh, thanks for sticking by me to go watch these. And uh, peace.